All honor, praise, and glory be to Howard Bashamel Shah, Wahaka Dashwaka, double honor to the apostles and the elders at the Great Millstone. Peace and bless to the faithful elect, those slaves to be saved from the destruction promised to America and to all its inha wicked inhabitants thereof and to different parts of the globe, but primarily America. Those slated to be saved, not being none other than the Israelites, who consist of the so called blacks, so called Na uh, Native American Indians, so called Latinos, you know what I'm saying? So called blacks, aka Negroes. All right? Men teaching the truth, and men, women, and children have turned back to their heritage. All right? At the end of these last days, and they are in this faith according to their works. So, this is something. You know, really beautiful, pretty much, that I want to speak on, you know, going to and, uh, you know, highlight. And that's pretty much, you know, mercy, understanding how mercy works and why it's important to understand these things in the end of these last days and really to ultimately show you that, you know, with first understanding, you know, pretty much how work, how mercy works according to the scriptures also seeing that the lord is clearly activating mercy it's something he has to activate in order for it to work or in order for it to be gotten so this is Sirach 35 and 20 it says i'm gonna start at I'm going to just get to the point. Verse 20. Mercy is seasonable in the time of affliction as clouds of rain in the time of drought. So mercy is seasonable in the time of affliction. So it's like when, you know, certain clothes are in seasons. A, co a coat is in season when it's, when it's uh, you know, snoring or cold. So it's just, so mercy is in season when affliction is going on, and that's why the scriptures tell us this. This is a uh, Ecclesiastes, you know, fundamental scripture. Ecclesiastes three and one: To everything there is a season, and a time to every purpose under the heaven. So, um, understanding that, you know, it goes on to say a time to be born and a time to die, a time to plant and a time to pluck up that which is planted. Um, and I'm going to jump down to verse. I'm going to jump down to verse uh, 10. I have seen the travail which God, the Most High, hath given to the sons, Yahweh Shemuel Shah, hath given to the sons of men to be exercised in it. It says, he hath made everything beautiful in his, in his time. Also, he hath set the world in their hearts so that no man can find out the work that God maketh from the beginning to the end. So, the Lord has made everything beautiful in his time. So everything has its time to shine. You see, to everything, there is a season. So mercy is something that's only brought about when it's in season. You see what I'm saying? Real quick, let's take me here. This is, uh, jump back real quick. I believe that's Matthew, the... 16th chapter. Yeah, Matthew, uh, you know, I'm going to start at verse Matthew 24. It says, uh, Now learn a parable of, of the fig tree when his branch is yet tender and put it forth leaves. You know that summer is nigh. So there you go. It says, so likewise, when you see all these things, know that it is near, even at the door. So that fig tree is going into the prophecies, you know what I'm saying? And ultimately, the ushering in of Yahweh Shah, who's going to bring, you know what I'm saying, pretty much the ultimate form of the mercy. But before we get there, I just want to show this, because it says to everything, there is a season. So 
mercy is in season when affliction is going on, just like a coat is in season when it's cold, when it's winter outside. So as you can see right here, that's further said. Um, this is Matthew 24 and 30, 32. Now learn a parable of the fig tree when his branch is yet tender and put it forth leaves. Ye know that summer is not. So a fig tree bringing forth leaves, um, you know, it's, it's, it's because it's in season. It's because it's summer, meaning it's in season for it to do such. That's when it's activated. You see what I'm saying? So if you can receive what I'm saying, the Lord is is activating mercy right now because we're coming into the times of affliction. You see what I'm saying? So the Lord really wants to give us this mercy. You see? So we can't get it unless we get this affliction. You see what I'm saying? So it's is 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 really beautiful to know, and that gives us gives us the uh the edge on the on the devil, the so-called white man, and all these things that uh is coming forth. You see what I'm saying? From the earth being given into his hands, which you know what I'm saying, who and whom he's been deemed as being whose hands been that has been be, deemed to be the wicked. The wicked hands. This is Job 30 Sep Slakia. This is uh Jeremiah. And these are some quick side ones before we really go into this. This is Jeremiah 30 and 7. It says, At last, for that day is great, so that none is like it, for it is even a time of Jacob's trouble. See, because to everything there is a season, and to every uh purpose. Let me go back. Ecclesiastes 3 and 1, it says, to everything there is a season and a time to every purpose. So the purpose of Jacob's trouble is because it's time. You see what I'm saying? And it's going to highlight, it's going to be um, pretty much manifested because it's time. And it has its purpose. You see what I'm saying? So Jacob's trouble is a bad time. But it says to everything there is a season. So it's going to be, it's going to come. Um, Jacob, trouble is a bad time. You see what I'm saying? But the purpose for it is ultimately to activate mercy, if you can see what I'm saying. Because Jacob's trouble is affliction. And we just heard. Mercy is seasonable in the time of affliction because Jacob's trouble is nothing more than a time. You see what I'm saying? So we're going to go right back to that. This is Jeremiah 30 and 7. Alas, for that day is great so that none is like it. It is even the time of Jacob's trouble, but he shall be saved out of it. See that? So the Lord want to outright give us mercy, man. As he said. Let's go back. This is Sirach. He wants to give those that have returned uh, this mercy. This is Sirach 35 and 20. Mercy is seasonable in the time of affliction. You see what I'm saying? As clouds of rain in the time of drought. So the Lord bringing this Jacob's trouble, bringing these floods, these mil the military in, the, uh, the hour of temptation, you see what I'm saying, which has come upon the world to try those therein, you see, which is the mark of the beast, which is the uh, RFID chip, which is already here, it just has to be mandated, all these different things. Pestilence, famine, sword, you see what I'm saying? These race wars, all this confusion out here, this chaos, you know what I'm saying? We happen to be as a pilgrim. That's an afflicting time. But in that same, that's Jacob's, that's Jacob's trouble right there. In that same time, the Lord said that's when mercy is seasonable because mercy is seasonable in the time of affliction. And it says... Mercy is seasonable in the time of affliction as, cl as clouds of rain in the time of drought. 
So it's like when it's been hot as hell outside and this, you know, the humidity is crazy and it finally rained, you'd be like, yeah, it needed to rain. You see what I'm saying? Well, that can't happen. You can't have that be said or have that feeling because the Lord wants you to feel that. You see what I'm saying? You can't have that feeling uh, activated to bring forth you saying that if it wasn't a damn drought, man. You see what I'm saying? Because in any other time, you probably wouldn't even appreciate it. So the Lord really wants to bring this mercy because he likes showing his power, man. You see what I'm saying? And he wants to, to he wants to wants it to make it he wants to make it clear. You see what I'm saying that he's for us. Now, going ahead and going back, it was something I was gonna go into with that. But that's fine. So that should be clear. This is uh spirit is moving. This is uh let's see. Let's go to Psalms. That's what I was gonna get. Let's go here. This is uh Isaiah to further prove this. Isaiah 14 and 1, for the Lord will have mercy on Jacob. But how? Once Jacob is afflicted. See that? And thus showing he really wants to give us this mercy, this mercy, this legendary mercy we keep hearing about. You see what I'm saying? Because he said he's gonna, for the Lord, Yahweh will have mercy on Jacob. And he's talking about nobody else. And will yet choose Israel, this particular mercy. And set them in their own land. Because that's what comes with this mercy, man. See? So we got to be being afflicted in these in other places in order for us to be put back in our land. And our land is, is going to be actually built up by those afflicting us, man. You see what I'm saying? We're going to take them back to our land. You know what I'm saying? In order for you, it's like when you need to... Uh, you want to change your shirt because something happened. Well, something probably got to get spilt on it. You want to change your daycare to watch your kids or something. Well, something bad got to happen in order for you to do that. You see what I'm saying? You want to, uh, 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 you know, if you can receive what I'm saying. This is Isaiah 14 and 1. Again, it says, for the Lord, Yahweh, Bashmi Shah will have mercy on Jacob and will yet choose Israel and set them in their own land. And the strangers shall be joined with them and they shall cleave to the house of Jacob. And the people shall take them and bring them to their place. You see what I'm saying? To their place. And the house of Israel shall possess them in the land of the Lord of Yahweh Bashmi Shah for servants and handmaids. And they shall take them, them captives who captives they were. And they shall rule over the oppressors, and it shall come to pass in the day that the Lord shall give thee rest from thy sorrow and from thy fear, from the hard bondage wherein thou was made to serve. You see what I'm saying? So that's that legendary mercy. This is only going to be able to be gotten through affliction. This is all mercy right here. Mercy is seasonable in the time of affliction. So all hell breaking loose, you should really be welcoming it because it's a clear indication the Lord is wanting to make good on his word. You see what I'm saying? Why would the so-called white man think he has us or he has you? Boom. Mercy is seasonable in the time of affliction. He busts you out. You get the spiritual power. He saves you. Because you could take this and make this functional in everyday life. This understanding. Mercy is seasonable in the time of affliction, man. Because he really wants us to appreciate it. That's really what he's showing. But this is going on to get to the point. This is Psalms 102 and 13. Doubt shall arise. It says, thou shalt arise and have mercy upon Zion for the time to favor her. Yeah, the set time is come. What's the set time? Affliction, man. Jacob's trouble. 
You see what I'm saying? Let me read that again. Psalms 102 and 13. Thou shalt arise and have mercy upon Zion for the time to favor her. Yeah. You see what I'm saying? The set time is come. So the Lord has not given us any mercy yet, man. Why? Because he hasn't brought that affliction. So the longer he keeps uh, uh, prolonging the affliction, you see what I'm saying? And which will really highlight, it, ha it will have to be an affliction to really highlight his mercy. You see what I'm saying? We would have to be brought low. We would have to be, you know, constantly ridiculed, mocked, kept from all things, made to serve hard, rigorous bondage, uh, defamed, um, you know, by words, all these things put on us, rounded it up, our people rounded up. Uh, the, you got men, women put to death, children put to death for your how about me, I was shot. But guess what? That's when that mercy is activated. That's the Lord outright bringing something to really to contrast. You see what I'm saying? Just for a contrast. And that contrast would be mercy, man. That contrast would be all the so-called uh, blacks, Latinos, Native American, Indian, women, children, men that have died for Yahweh Bashem Yahweh during Jacob's trouble. Uh, a contrast would be due to that happening, the mercy would be activated. And the contrast to that happening will be them rising. You see what I'm saying? Up back from the dead and being the first ones on the chariot, coming back down to earth in the perfect bodies. You see what I'm saying? Before those that, you know, still remain are beamed up. That would be the contrast to that, man. When you're outright getting rounded up and you getting they were getting ready to put you in a camp. You see what I'm saying? And you already never had none. You've been we've been oppressed this entire time. That's when the mercy is activated. The complete contrast would be to that would be the Lord putting a spiritual power on you, busting out and busting out, you know, a slew of Jakes around you that's probably up to one third. You see what I'm saying? And you putting to death all these people that you see what I'm saying? However you want to go with it, man. And that's what this is going on the show. This is Psalms 102 and um, 13. Thou shalt, thou shalt arise and have mercy upon Zion for the time to favor her. Yeah, the set time has come. It says, um, now we're going to move on because that sounds high, right? What I just said. Well, that's only if you ain't got no faith, man. And really, that's only until you understand how mercy really works. So let me get my last couple of scriptures. This is uh Psalms 103 and 1. It says I'm going to start at uh 6. The Lord Yahweh executed righteousness and judgment for all that are oppressed. See that? He made known his ways unto Moses, his acts unto the children of, of Israel, so-called blacks, Latinos, and Native American Indians, our ancestors. Us back in the incarnation, if you will, reincarnation. It says, the Lord is merciful and gracious. You see, Yahweh is merciful and gracious, slow to anger and plenteous and mercy. Now, when we get that word plenteous, see if it gives it to me. Because the scripture go on to say, I ain't even gonna waste no time on it. We're gonna keep going. Yeah, we're gonna keep going. This is uh it says, He will not always chide, neither will he keep his anger forever. Why? Because he's gonna bring Jacob's trouble. That's how he gets rid of his anger. So the Lord wants to give us that mercy, man. It says, he have not dealt with us after our sins, nor rewarded, rewarded us according to our iniquities. Why? Because it just told us the Lord is plenteous in mercy, man. He's merciful. It says, listen, for as the heavens, Slakia, for as the heavens is high above the earth, 
the heavens. It's three. The heavens. When you go into the word heavens, it's Shemayim in the Hebrew, and you got three of them. You got the first heaven, you got the second heaven, and you got the third heaven with the most high bowl. The first heaven is where you walk, the one you walk out to when you walk outside. You see what I'm saying? And you look up. That's the first heaven. And then the second heaven is the one above that, known as outer space. And the third heaven is the abode of the most high. Spirit realm, if you will. You see what I'm saying? And I'm going to prove that real quick. So we could keep this, you know, in the grasp of your understanding or belief. This is uh, 2 Corinthians 12, and I'm going to start at verse uh, 2. It says, I knew a man. I'm going to start at 1. It is not expedient for me, doubtless, to glory. You see, it is not expedient, expedient for me, doubtless, to glory. So you ain't, ain't spoke. Because anything you do without faith is sin, man. It says, I will come to visions and revelations of the Lord. You see? I knew a man in Hamashiach above 14 years ago, whether in the body, I cannot tell, or whether out of the body, or whether out of the body, I cannot tell. The Most High knoweth, such an one caught up to the third heaven, you see, and I, and I knew such a man, whether in the body or out of the body, I cannot tell. The Most High knoweth, how that he was caught up into paradise. And heard unspeakable words, which is not lawful for a man to utter. You see what I'm saying? Of such and one will I glory, yet of myself will I not glory, but in my infir infirmities. <laughs> so the Lord, uh, uh, Paul, this pretty much the Lord has revealed through Paul right here that the third heaven is where he ab abodes, and that's the paradise, man. So you got two, you got three heavens. You see what I'm saying? Outer space and the one you go out to and look look up to, you know, every day on earth. But going ahead, going back where I was just at, this is uh, uh, Psalms 103 and 10. It says, he have not dealt with us after our sins because he's plenteous in, mer plenteous in mercy. Remember, it says, nor rewarded us for the, for uh, rewarded us according to our iniquities. So the Lord really love us, man. It says, for as the heaven is high above the earth, so great is his mercy toward them that fear him. You see what I'm saying? So you talking three heavens, man. You know how high you know how high it is when you're in the airplane and you still ain't at the top of the sky. Now, you got to get above that and you got to get to the highest point of outer space. <laughs> Then you got to get to a heaven, a sky you can't even see. You can't even reach. That's what he's saying. It says, for as the heaven is high above the earth, so great is his mercy toward them that fear him. See what I'm saying? It says... Uh, this is verse uh, 17, so it ain't nothing for, like I said, if you being put in that situation where you getting rounded up, they trying to force you to take the chip, they got your kids, uh, 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 you out of food, you know, these mothers done bought all the food in your local area, you see what I'm saying? That's all affliction, man. They stop sending food into the, the area you living in, you see, you can't, the, the job fire you or whatever, uh... You surrounded by a bunch of diseased ass people or something. You just never know how it could be. You know what I'm saying? Sword, bunch of war going on in the area you in or whatever it may be. Chaos, drama. He said in that time, that's when the Lord said, uh, and that's affliction. In that time, mercy is seasonable. The Lord I can outright move you and put you in some big put up mansion that's not even dealing with any of this. The Lord can outright have you, uh, uh, someone come knock at your door or, or some. you see what I'm saying, and tell you about a, a grocery store that's no one's, for, everyone's forgot about and it's filled with food. You see what I'm saying? The Lord can, that's that mercy. 
You see what I'm saying? And But that's all during Jacob's trouble. He wants to give that just to contrast this is being true. That's what's going to happen. But you got to fear him now. Meaning, do as he say. Believe in this. You see what I'm saying? So it's beautiful, man. So that's pretty much it. That's all I pretty much want to go into. I'm going to probably go ahead and close this out. Um, you know, that was pretty much it. Yeah. You know, and it, it, it definitely ain't nothing for when you under a guillotine, if you want to go go even further. You see what I'm saying? If you want, if you want to go even further, it's definitely not nothing for him to get 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 you out of that. Had a damn guillotine stop, you see what I'm saying, or make your damn bones turn into uh, 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 metal or something temporarily. You just don't even know how the Lord could do it, man. But in a time of affliction, you've been fearing Him. Hey, that's when mercy is seasonable, man. As rain is in a in a, uh, in a cloud, you know, in a, in a drought, man. That's how he's saying he's going to pour down his mercy. So I'm going to go ahead and get this and get that and close out. This is Isaiah 30 and uh, 18. And therefore will the Lord wait, you see, that he may be gracious unto you. You see what I'm saying? So he's going to wait until he can outright contrast exactly what's happening, man, with his mercy. So he's got to give the fl affliction. Affliction got to hit an all-time high. For him to do something unimaginable when this place has just been, he gonna put us in our own land. You gonna have a home you never. You gonna have homes, man. You gonna have palaces. You gonna own all type of just everything, man. You gonna own people, nations. You gonna rule over nations. But we have to really go to it. That's showing you with him really having us at the bottom. These people doing it to doing this to us. You see what I'm saying? And us never being considered. That's how we know he going to bring this, man. Because what contrasts that harder than uh, 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 those ruling over us to the highest degree and never considering us being the same people to be ruled over by those they were ruling over? You see what I'm saying? What contrasts that harder than that? Nothing. You see what I'm saying? So it says, and therefore will the Lord wait. Yahweh yeah, wait that he may be great that he may be gracious unto you and therefore will he be exalted. You see that? Because that's what the Lord, you're gonna exalt the Lord. That's gonna exalt his power, man. That he may have mercy upon you. You see? Let me read it again. Therefore will the Lord wait that he may be gracious unto you, and therefore will he be exalted. You see? That's what he's trying to do. That he may have mercy upon you. For the Lord is a God of judgment. Blessed are all they that wait for him. That's all we got to do. It says, for the people shall dwell in Zion at Jerusalem. Thou shalt weep no more. He will be very gracious unto thee. At the voice of thy cry, when he shall hear it, he will answer thee. You ain't crying yet. Jake's still riding around in Porsche and Maserati. People still got jobs. People got all this stuff, man. You see what I'm saying? So even in the times of now, because it ain't even got to get that bad for everybody. When we on you on you on your last end, that's that's affliction. That's when the Lord, that's when mercy is seasonable. So now you know a trick. You see what I'm saying? Now you know how you know now you know a trick. You know what's going on. You got the glitch. You see what I'm saying? You see what's truly going on. So that's pretty much it, man. And then like I said, the martyr thing, you can go read, I believe that's uh First Thessalonians, the third chapter. It tell you that they that die in the Lord, uh, pretty much you're not gonna uh, prevent. You're not gonna prevent them. You see what I'm saying? Don't even quote me on that. But you can look it up. We won't. We won't prevent. Prevent them. Yep. It says First uh, Thessalonians four and fifteen. For this say we unto you by the word of the Lord that we which are alive and remain until the coming of the Lord shall not prevent them which asleep. Because some people gonna die for Yahweh by some y'all shot. It says for the Lord shall descend from the heaven uh, with a shout, with the voice of an archangel, and with the trump of God of the Most High, the Heavenly Father, and the dead in Hamashiach Yahweh by some y'all shot shall rise first. You see, then we which are alive remain and remain shall be caught up together with them 
in the clouds, meaning the chariots, those spaceships, man, to meet the Lord in the air. This is in, this is it, man. It says, and so shall we ever be with the Lord. Wherefore, comfort one another with these words. So we ain't got nothing. So if you die throughout the affliction, guess what? We'll contrast that higher. The Lord outright bringing you back and you meeting the Lord in the air first and being changed and being made perfect, per perfect. And you seeing everybody that you uh, uh, left that was in the truth. You see what I'm saying? And we ruling forever and ever. And you never dying again. That's what will contrast that. So that's the Lord's mercy. So I'm going to go ahead and get this and close out. This is Sirach, uh 35 and 20. It says, mercy is seasonable. In the time of affliction, as clouds of rain in the time of drought. So that's how it works. The Lord is activating uh, 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 mercy right now, man. Activate it. Yahweh Bashem Yahushah. Call 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 Halayim La. Yahweh Bashem Yahushah. Wachabah Wahadar. Amen. All honor, praise, and glory to the heavenly Father. In the name of His Son Yahweh Bashem Yahushah. Till next time. Amen. Shalom.